go with the Got point? It? Yes. You want to go get the point? Yeah, please. Sure. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the HEMA Pandemic live stream series. We are today going to be continuing on in our look at half sorting. However, today the guard we're going to do is called Posta Sagittarius or Guard of the Archer from Fiore's manuscript, Fiore de Battaglia. When we are doing this guard, we are going to be pulling our hand and our sword back. And you'll see how far removed it is from in front. The first thing that I want to do is I want to work on getting into that position. So when we start holding our sword, and we're holding it here like this, the first thing we're going to do is take our pommel hand off, grasp our blade about thumb up, take your thumb of your sword hand, your top hand, rest it over your quillen. So it's going around your quillen onto your blade. From then, you're just going to rotate around so that your sword is back here. And you'll see the way it just kind of sits in the fingers. And I can either have my thumb around it or I can take my thumb off of it. And that allows me to keep my fingers here. So to do that again, I start with my sword in two hands. I reach out, I grasp my blade with my weak hand, thumb up, thumb over, and then it goes back and it stays high. It doesn't stay down low, but it stays up here. Now, this is a exceptionally short blade for this. This is only 90 centimeters total. So uh, the blades, the way I understand it in the manuscript, should be closer to an extra 10 centimeters. The blade itself should be an extra 10 centimeters longer than this one. And if I'm holding it here, that's going to make a lot more sense with the uh, point out. One thing about holding and using Posta Sagittarius is that this is a guard you do in armor because I'm going to be relying on my van brace as part of my protection. Since we're not suiting up and a lot of people don't have armor, I want to give you an idea of how you can use it. Uh, if you are playing with uh, practicing or tournaments, that kind of thing, you can get van braces from uh, sites like Purple Heart, and they are created by SPES, and they're designed to protect it, and it's basically armor. It's just made out of plastic instead of metal. So you can still practice safely wearing those things. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off facing our opponent. Both of us are in a long guard. And at this point, we don't, I don't want to be here anymore. So I'm going to do a mezza volta back with my lead foot. So it just behind my left foot. So my right foot moves over and back just behind my right foot. So I start here to get this because I'm going to step in with my left foot to take a slightly new line. So we start here. And that puts me in this position. Go and switch sides, please. So we start here. I move over. And I'm moving my lead foot back because I want to make sure that if I bring my, lead, my back foot forward, he can now hit me with a step. And I don't want to risk it. And because I'm in armor, I put myself on a pillar. And this is dangerous. But if I move my lead foot back and over, and he does that step as I step, I'm still able to protect myself with distance. My heel is up off the ground. And as I complete it, I've now taken this new line. 
And if he stays there, there's a lot of problems. So this is just how I'm getting to the guard. Let's go back to where we were. So we're here. You're not going to do anything yet? Mm -hmm. And that puts me in this new line. Now, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to get in a little closer because we're going to assume now that we're already engaged in the fight. So I'm in here. My opponent is going to give me a cut. Now, there's a lot of people that are of the opinion that cutting against a person in armor is useless. I would like to dissuade you of that fact. They are correct in the fact that the sword cut will not cut through the armor. However, it does ring your bell, especially if they catch you right over the ear. So a good cut to the helmet can disrupt your balance, throw off your thought process. It can create an opening. So it is a threat. So I'm in here in Post to Sagittarius. And my opponent is going to, let me get in front of him, step in and hit me in the head. And I'm not going to move. So this is the blow that's coming in. Now, a little difference. Stay here. Come in closer with me, actually. A little difference between unarmored and armored fighting. Uh, give me that blow again. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, hold on. Let's do it. Let me stand here. You stand here because I want them to see how far it is on my head. Mm -hmm. If we're fighting unarmored, we want to hit with about here, which is what we're calling, we'll call the sweet spot. It's, uh, let's move back so you can see where it's making contact. So it's developing the most amount of transference of energy into the target, my skull. Go and relax. Unlike Tamashigiri or uh, cutting, he has to worry about his target cutting back. So he's not going to be throwing everything he has into it and putting himself off balance. So this is the unarmored strike. Go ahead and do that again. We're going to hit with what we call the sweet spot for the greatest transference of energy. However, when we're in armor, we don't use the sweet spot. We use what is called the center of percussion or COP. The center of percussion, every blade has one, but it's slightly different on every blade. So if I'm here and I slap the forte of my blade, there's one spot right about here that doesn't vibrate. Let me do it again. Yeah, it's right there. That's my center of percussion. And so that is just a bit more than a pommel below my point. Can I borrow your sword? However, on this sword, it's right there. And this one shows really good because you can see that one spot that's not vibrating. And the reason that's important for us is if my opponent hits me, or I let's go the other way. If I hit my opponent using the center of percussion. All the energy is transferred into the target and none is lost through vibrations in the blade. When my opponent hits me with the sweet spot, there are vibrations lost from the target through vibrations. But when you hit with the COP, we don't run the same loss of energy transference. And I have a couple examples I want to tell you about with that, uh, that I've had happen to me. I was fighting a gentleman in New Zealand and we were playing around fighting, fencing. He threw a fendente, a cut at me, and I stepped forward into the side, and I've had this happen multiple times. I think four times now this has happened to me. I stepped forward into the side, and I countercut his sword. So I hit the flat of his blade. But because I changed the measure, I hit it with my 
center of percussion. So all energy was transferred from my cut into the flat of his blade and his sword broke. I hate breaking people's swords. Uh, not as much as, well, I don't like doing it. So the reason that happened is all the energy transferred. Many of us have had swords break when we're fencing with them. But generally, when a sword breaks, John and I are fencing, and he hits my sword, and it breaks, my point goes flying off into the distance. And I've had that happen to me as well. When I used my center of percussion, if you'll give me that blow, I'm able to cut right down, all the energy transfers into his blade, his point broke off and landed on the ground at my foot. It didn't go away, it went straight down. And that's because all the energy was transferred directly into the target. When you're hitting somebody in armor with your sword, you want to do the same thing. You are not hitting them with the sweet spot. You're hitting them with the center of percussion. It's important to remember that. That means your distance is going to change. Um, I have one more example I want to tell you about for that. And that was when I was on set with Adam Savage for Savage Builds, his episode called Excalibur. I was using a sword that he built, and I hit a two-liter bottle, and I hit it with a sweet spot. I cut through it, but it was an ugly cut. It, was, it came in, and then it kind of wobbled. And that's because the vibrations of the blade as it went through the target. So I got to do another cut. This one I hit with the center of percussion, so I got just a little bit closer. It was a straight line all the way through. When you are hitting a target that you're trying to transfer the utmost energy into, hit with the center of percussion, not with the sweet spot or the point of the sword. Now let's go back to this action. So, John, I'm in post of Sagittarius. John's going to step forward and cut me in the head. And now he's closer, so he's hitting me with his center of percussion. Great. Do it again. To capture this, I'm going to dip my point. But if you remember the last class, I dip my point not by dropping my point, but by lifting up the other end. So I'm here and I do this. So he throws that cut, and that puts me behind my sword. Let's go a little bit closer to the screen. You'll notice I'm not gripping my sword anymore with my left hand. That's not what I'm trying to do. I am just letting it rest in there so that when he pushes it, it doesn't go anywhere, and I've got complete control of it. I'm not trying to do this, and especially not trying to do that if I'm in armor. So let's go ahead and do that again. Okay, check and measure. Check and measure. Ready? Ready. Look how I'm able to close line, and that puts my arm onto his hands as well. Let's switch sides. Check measure. Checking measure. Ready? Ready. So I've got this coverage. Another thing that's happening here, and I want you guys to see this. Let's do it again. One more time, just right here. Check measure. And then I want to move closer to the screen. Yes, sir. Okay, let's move closer. You'll notice I'm not capturing it hard edge on edge. I'm capturing it. I'm finding it and sliding along it and using my arm. Just like any wrestling technique, we have two points of contact. Now, those two points of contact for me on my sword are high and low, pommel and point. On him, it's sword and wrist. Go ahead and hit me in the shoulder. Check okay. measure on my shoulder. Checking measure. Okay. A little bit faster. Okay. And that puts me in here. So I've got that coverage. And this is important for the next action. 
I'm going to lift up my point as I bring my hand down. Look how that puts my sword right behind his wrist. Then, from there, I want my pommel up. How do I get my pommel up? Push your point down. And see how I've got his sword blade locked on my leg? That's all I need to do. You good? Good. Let's go ahead and do that again. All right. Shoulder? Shoulder, please. All right. Check. Actually, this time on my head. On your head? Yeah, yes, nice sir. and slow. Okay, go ahead. It I does. Hold on. It does amazing. Tell tell them what you're feeling. Uh, it's actually quite fascinating here. So in the find, he's he's sliding off across my blade there to rest onto my arms, which then kind of bounces me off balance first and foremost. So when you're getting close to people, attack the structure, knock them off balance. Um, but the moment he's coming into the disarm, um, as he's pushing down. He's locking my blade to his thigh. Let's go closer. Yeah. And the moment he pushes, and it's so important, the moment he pushes that point down, he is breaking my wrist, wrenching my wrist, bending it right there, and stripping my ability to grip my sword away. He's wrenching my thumb here off of my grip. Now, what's this? Uh, hold on to your sword. You got it? Got it. Let's move back just a little bit. Got it? Don't Got hurt it. yourself. Got it. Ready? Ready. I don't have to work that hard. You okay? Good. But here's what I want you to see. Go and do it again. Put it here. If, on the other hand, I lift up. Got it? Got it. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to do it. Is your wrist okay? Good. Ready? Ready. <clears throat> here's a really fun thing to see. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Not a chance. Go and do that again. Mm -hmm. Ready? Ready. I don't need to do anything. It is so important. Let me grab that for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It is so important that you do not muscle your sword. When you muscle your sword, you are only breaking your structure. What is the art? What is the secret of martial arts? Hurt the other guy, not hurt yourself. The, hurt the other guy, not yourself. If you're hurting yourself, you're doing it wrong. And that means not just physically, that also means structurally. That's right, Ezekiel. Strength does not beat technique. Never so, will. and if this is a danger that strong people, fall into and it's something that you need to train yourself out of you rely on your greatest talent whatever that happens to be if you're with good with numbers everything looks like a math problem if you're strong you want to rely on your strength which is fine until you're tired or injured so you want to make sure that you have the technique to support it Let's go ahead and switch sides. Is your wrist okay? Wrist is just fine. All right, let's go ahead. We're not going to go that hard. I don't want to do that. So uh, let's go back here. Okay. I'm going to move, and as I move, you're going to close in distance, so you can move this way. Let's switch sides, actually. So now you're going to move this way and counter cut me. Sounds good. Uh, switch feet. Ready? Ready. And it just falls into place. And as I pull that up and I strip it from his hand, let me just mm -hmm. go ahead and put your wrist back. And I strip it from his hand and I pull him. I've got other options that I can pull in and really do a throw as well. Good. Thank you. Yes, sir. So let's do that again, please. All right. Ready? Ready. And I'm not going to go any further than this because we don't have the protection. Because at this point, Forte. let's turn around. I've got my right foot forward. At this point, I would pull it in and step into his leg as I use my point or my blade. 
just to push them over. Even with a mask and a bib, I would not trust that. With one of the soft gorgets that we see being used in tournaments, I would not trust that because it's my point and everything right around his trachea. If they're wearing a 15th style, 15th century style helmet that has uh, Aventel off the helmet, it's gonna hook right in that Aventel and it's just gonna be a lovely thing for me. Him on the other hand, not so much. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that. So let's do it one more time. Uh, but then, actually, I want you to do it to me. You can do this. Yep. <laughs> Bless. Thank you. All right, so just go into guard. Okay. All right, checking distance. Mm -hmm. Checking distance. Oh, yeah, that would be lovely. All right, so lift up your pommel, step around. Put your hands on mine, on my arms. Yeah, there you go. There it yeah. is. Now, lift up your point and pull your arm in. There it is. Now, hold it. Let me get that off my... Thank you. Go. Uh, well, keep that Bad point keep low. Keep that point down because it's now I need to lift. Wait, no, no. I'm sorry. Point up yep. because that's where you're at. Now, push your point down. And there's that, there's that lock. Yep. Go back. Just go ahead and push your point down. Go ahead and take it. Fascinating. Not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to hold on to it. When we add like the gauntlets, the, the hourglass gauntlets, it's gonna be even more powerful because that's actually gonna hook right behind my gauntlet and it's gonna hook on my gauntlet and it's now my armor becomes a locking mechanism for my joints and it makes him more powerful. Armor is super protective, but it also makes joint manipulation more powerful for someone else. Because in out of armor, I can move and I can flex my arm. When I'm in armor, I lose all that mobility. And so I'm already in a partial joint lock. So it's important to understand what the armor is going to do to this. Let's do it again. Let's switch sides. Okay. Nice and slow. Check and measure. Okay. There we go. Ready? Ready. There it is. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at Super that. Right now, he goes ahead and go ahead and just rip it out of my hands. Right, and then as he does that, he steps behind me with this foot. So now he's got me here. Oh, oh, this is gonna be really bad to me. Now, all he does is he goes like last class, he lifts that pommel up this way, taking his point behind, no, behind your head, behind your head. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Cause I'm here, look how badly my structure is broken cause he stepped into me. Go ahead and just point behind your head. And I'm I'm in cur curls him right up. I'm in bad shape. Let's go and do that again. All right. Check and measure. Ready? Ready. There it is, and then point goes behind his head. Now, look at his, what's that, left leg. Uh, rotate, no, the other way. This way. See that contact his left leg has with mine. So here he's already busting my structure by stepping into me. Don't move. This armor has the fan on the, on the joints. I have one too. He's actually just stepped in right behind my fan and he's not actually touching my leg if I was in armor. He's hitting my fan and that's forcing me, 
my leg to bend. And that fan is there, go ahead and relax. That fan is there to protect from cuts to the back of the knee. But it also becomes something that you can use to disrupt their structure. Does that make sense? That's that. Cool. I'd like to do it one more time to you, please. Yes, sir. Just because it's always fun to do. Uh, I'm going to start in, let's both start in long guard. Ready? Ready. And that's all we've got. You'll notice his sword did not stay close to me. It went flying. We were drilling something similar to this in armor class. And I was watching. They were all in armor. And the sword came flying at me. And I literally had to leap over the sword as it flew past me at about shin level. Do you remember that night? I do remember that night, yeah. That was a, that was a good time. I was very happy with how successful they were. So with that... We're going to close up, but before we do, we do something that I haven't in class that I haven't done here that I want to restart. And that is, I want to ask John what he learned today. We have people say what they learned for two reasons. One, if you repeat what the instructor said to you, you are only borrowing the information. But if you can take that information and put it into your own words, you now own this information and it's yours. And I want you to own this information. Second reason is that John may say something that was very similar, exactly what I said, but with different words. And when you can hear something, the same idea in different words, it clicks for different people. So this is an opportunity that we can continue to learn from one another. And to be honest, that's what I'm doing as well. I use this opportunity every time I hear a student say something, I get a new vocabulary, a new way to vocalize thoughts that I've had and things I've done. John, please tell us, what did you learn today? Um, so one of the most important pieces that stand out for me, and this is my second time really working on exclusively half sorting. So feeling how the techniques of half sort really function. It is reminded me that one of the most important pieces, you cannot grip your sword. You cannot choke your tool. You have to hold it and allow it to just rest there. And the best way to allow it to rest is to rest in the structure of your bones. So when we're, and it was really came clear Resting in Sagittarius, sir. I'm barely, I'm not, I'm not even closing my hand on Come my sword closer. back here. I'm just resting it right there. So it's entire pressure, everything about it, it sits right inside there. And I don't have to close it. And I'm cupping this area here, not gripping. But when I rotate by pushing, I have to open... Both of them. If I grip either of them, I'm actually pushing myself off balance. And I'm also putting my tool at risk. Because if I grip it, my edge leads. And we smash. If I do that, we do what we call the high angle edge control there, which allows me to slide into the place. And that's important. It is high angle edge, it is not flat. Mm -hmm. If you're hitting with the flat, it's going to do what it's designed to do. It's going to bend. Right. Unfortunately, you're behind it. And that's going to, that bend is a spring ready to spring out of your hands. And so, you can lose complete control of your tool. So it was, it was just a super clear reminder that you don't just let it rest in the hands. And it allows the next action to come into play. Good. Like a punch. The only time I tense up is on contact. Because we're holding the sword in this manner, if you'll give me that, uh, let's switch sides. Mm -hmm. But I want to be here up close because I want them to see my hands. Go ahead. I don't even need to hold it now. Go ahead and push hard. He's pushing into, he's holding it for me. All I'm doing is giving it a place to be. Then, because I lift up my point, keep going. 
before she his energy transfers right into my action. I don't need to work. It, a general rule that I like to use here is if you're working hard, you're doing it wrong. Yep. If it feels too easy to be right, it's probably right. Let's switch sides. So with that, I want to apologize for being a half hour late today. I got my days mixed up. Happens during this time of, year, this time of the event. But thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you with us. I hope you enjoyed this. Stay safe, stay sane, and we'll see you on the other side of it. Until then, all the best to you. Boom. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Henry. Cool. Awesome job.